Welcome to the Eureka Research Library and Museum. This is a place dedicated to the inventions of everyday objects. It's my pleasure to show you around. I am Professor Archimedes. Ah, Miss Cartridge, how are things going with Professor, you? Professor, hello. I'm just putting away all the books of reference we've used so far on Eureka. It's surprising how many subjects we've dealt with so far, isn't yes, it? Yes, indeed. What subject are we dealing with today? You'll have to ask the curator, Mr Halfpenny. He decides the subjects. The curator, Mr Halfpenny, and his second assistant, Miss Ogley. We've done the potato crisp, baked beans and, yes, spaghetti, Mr Halfpenny. What about sweets, Miss Ogley? Um, licorice all sorts, jelly babies and dolly mixtures. Look up cornflakes and chewing gum. Mm -hmm. Ah, Professor Meadies, you're here. <laughs> Mr Halfpenny, I've uh, brought a few people along with me. Ah, uh, oh, we've done cornflakes and chewing gum. Oh, looking at food again, Professor. Good idea. What have you got? Uh, Miss Cartridge? Yes? Found anything? What about crumpets? Oh, no, too much like doughnuts, and we did them last time. True. Care for a cup of tea, Professor? Yes, please. Uh, would you like the story on the pressure cooker? Oh, Miss Ogley. Ah, we haven't done that. Good idea, Professor Meadies, the pressure cooker. Tea up! Mrs. Ford, the museum cleaner and tea lady. Hello, Professor Archie Meadies. Oh, I do like that. Archie Meadies. Very appropriate for Eureka. Would you like some sugar? Uh, no, thanks. I've got some saccharin. Saccharin? Now, that's a good story, Mr. Halfpenny. We oh. haven't done that. <laughs> Miss Cartridge, do be careful now. I shall have to mop that up. As if I haven't got enough to do cleaning this place. Professor Meadies, not on there, please. Disgusting. So, today we will be doing Worcestershire sauce and mustard. And I thought of the toothbrush. Saccharin and the pressure cooker. All everyday objects, things people take for granted, Mr Halfpenny. The toothbrush is something we all take for granted. But it's not a food, Miss Cartridge. <clears throat> oh, hey up, there comes Mr Dunn. The director, Mr Dunn. Morning, everybody. Oh, oh, morning, Mr Dunn. Morning, Mr. Dunn. Ah, any tea for me? Oh. Mr. Dunn. Thank you. Ah, Professor. Hmm? Oh, no. You haven't brought in all your research students again, have you? Look, Mr. Halfley and the girls have got quite enough to do cataloguing and checking without researching everyday objects. Any, uh, biscuits or cakes? Oh, I shall fetch some hither. We are doing things to do with food today, Mr. Dunn. Food? Oh, good. Uh, what sort of food? Hamburgers? <laughs> well, no. We thought Worcestershire sauce and mustard for starters. Oh. Saccharin and the pressure cooker. Mm. And I thought of the toothbrush. Oh. Well, after you've eaten, you should always clean your teeth. Jolly good. Sounds all right to me. Well, uh, can I join in? <laughs> of course, Mr. Dunn. We shall need someone to play Lord Sands. Sands, eh? Are we going to be doing the sandwich, then? Oh, no. <laughs> Lord Sands, a nobleman of the county of Worcestershire. Follow me. Worcestershire sauce. Come with me to 1835 and a little chemist shop in Worcester. Oh, you would really like something for my husband's dreadful liver complaint, Mr. Lee. Of course, Mrs. Herbert. My partner and I do our own preparation of taracasm or dandelion coffee for liver complaint. Hello, I'm John Wheelie Lee. Wheelie? Yes, Mrs. Herbert, John Wheelie Lee. That's really a strange name, Mr. Lee. We have had a druggist and chemist here in Broad Street, Worcester, since 1823. My partner is, of course... Uh, William Perrins of Lee and Perrins. Excuse me. Now, Mrs. Tearfree, what can I be doing for you? Is it pills or, or ointment? Uh, well, or... it is rather a delicate matter. Ah, yes. Now, you'll be wanting our own Dr. Lowcox Lotion and Marrow Pomade. Oh. For restoring the hair. Oh, no, I ha I'll have a tin of anchovies. Hair restorer? Do you do hair restorer, Mr. Lee? It's a highly esteemed emollient oh. lotion, yes. That'll be just the thing for my Wanald. My Wanald is as bald as a... 
as a... a... Coot. Have you any really strong sauce, Mr. Perrins? My husband does like his stews tasty. Well, we have some curry powder or, or catsup from India, nabob sauce. How's from Mr. Herbert's skin problem, Oh, Mrs. I'm Herbert? afraid he's suffering from scurvy again, Mr. Lee. Our essence of sarsaparilla is to be oh. recommended. No, I'll have some ginger pepper and cloves, make up something myself. Then there's his twinch gums, <laughs> his diarrhoea, his ingrowing toenail. His uh, to be honest, Mrs. Sir. Herbert, I oh, think you'd dear. be better buying a full... Liam Perrin's medical chest for your husband. Oh. John? Wee really? Lee? Lee, that's right, yes. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Tivery would like a really strong sauce. For a oh. bald spot. Really? What sauce? Sorry. Yeah, I'll do nicely, thank you very much. Are you John Lee? Wee Lee. I'm sorry? John Wheelie Lee. Really? Wee Lee. Oh. Uh, how can I help you, sir? Ah, now listen. I gather that you are analytical chemist by permission. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's something I would like you to analyse for me. This is the wife, Amani. Definitely a woman. A fine woman. No, 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 not the wife, damn it. This. It's a bottle. A nearly empty bottle. Ah, yes. But what is inside? Mud? Paint? No, no, damn it. It's a sauce. Look. Oh. Oh. It's all dried up. It's from India. Yes, got it when I was uh, governor of Bengal. What, what do you think? Mm. Garlic. Spices, yes, tamarind. Yes. Fishy smell. Vinegar. Yes. Yes. We know what's in it, Mr. Perrins. Our Indian chef gave us the recipe. Yes. <laughs> Bengal blaster! <laughs> oh. Marcus, yes. I mean Lord Sands, calls it that. Likes it on his chops. Yes. <laughs> well, what do you think? Well, it's somewhat... How um, would I put it? Uh, disgusting. Yeah, disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say, yeah. Well, yeah. I like it, old chap, and I'd like you to make some up for me. He must have it on his chops. Is yes. it some sort of embrocation? On his mutton chops. Well, give us the ingredients and we can make up a bottle or two for you in a day or two, I ah, suppose. Ah, Hermione! Yeah. Let's have a look. Yes, yeah. what we got here? Uh, uh, onions, anchovies, garlic, garlic tamarind, vegetable extract, extract. Yeah. salt, sugar, sugar vinegar. vinegar. Oh, and that. And some of that. Oh, look at <laughs> a bit of that. Goodness me, what a mixture. Yes, well, look here. Uh, uh, keep it under your hats. That's a secret recipe from the Bengal. You know what these Indian chaps are like if you don't keep a secret. No. Yes. Best damn sauce in the world, eh? <laughs> we'll get the ingredients and mix it up for you tomorrow, Lord Sands. Back, Mr. Perry. Oh, yes, yes, Mrs. Herbert. And this is for his ingrowing toenail, oh. our tincture of cloves to relieve the toothache. And a ah, and Lord and Lady <laughs> Sands. We've made up the concoction to your recipe. Oh, jolly goodly. Right. Let's have a taste then. Here we are, sir. There we go. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, Bengal Blaster, well done. Have you tried it? No, no we, we just didn't. made it up. <sighs> Much do I owe you? It'll be uh, two shillings for the ingredients. Oh, jolly good. Now listen, I shall <coughs> want some more making up. Uh, thank you, sir. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. oh, thank you so much. Marcus has been rather down of late. Bengal Blaster always gets his spirits up. Thank Come you. On here. Coming! Well, it seemed to do him good, didn't it? I'm glad we made some more. It should sell well if it has that effect. Lee and Perrin's Indian sauce. Let's try some. Right. Mm. Oh, what do you think? Well, it's somewhere. How would I put it? How would you put it? It's disgusting. disgusting. It's absolutely horrible. Horrible. Take it away. Oh, Take it away. Look. Put it down in the cellar. Lord Sands is welcome to oh. it. See you again tomorrow, Mrs. Herbert. That should do the trick for your husband's boils. How's it going? And we've had a very good year, partner. Everything has turned over very fast and profitably. Ooh. Only thing is, I found these old stone jars rolling about in the cellar. I can't remember what's in them. I mean, what are they for? Are not those old Lord Sands Bengal sores? I'd forgotten all about Lord them. Lord Sands, he never came back for them, did he? Oh, might as well throw them all out. <laughs> I, oh. I say, John, dare I say it? Have a taste. 
What do you think? Well, uh, it's somewhat time. How would I put it? Same as I would put it. It's, it's wonderful! wonderful. Uh, they must have matured in the char, fermented and matured. A disgusting Indian sauce left for a year in Worcestershire and now a, a wonderful sauce. A wonderful Worcestershire sauce. Mm, yummy, this is the stuff. Did you keep the recipe? Oh, well, as a matter of fact, I, I came across it the other day in, in, in the back of the book. Well, here. we mustn't show it to anyone else. All those secret ingredients. We'll mix it up and mature it in the cellar. This sauce will make our fortune, dear John. Really? <laughs> oh, sorry. Dear John Wheelie. <laughs> <gasps> Liam Perrin's got Lord Sand's permission to reproduce the sauce commercially, and it has become one of the most popular accompaniments to the dining table and as a cooking accessory. Good stuff, Worcestershire sauce. I have it on everything. No, not on chocolate biscuits, though, Mr. <laughs> Dunn. Did you know, today, there are only five people in the country who know the secret recipe? Well, shouldn't the ingredients be written on the bottle? Shh! Every day today, 1,300 casks of maturing Worcestershire sauce have to be rolled and shaken by hand by three full-time Worcestershire sauce barrel rollers. Well, I never, never thought. In 1906, the High Court of Justice ruled that only Lee and Perrins could call their Worcestershire sauce the original and genuine because there were so many copies. And here's a copy from Japan in 1908. Oh. Worker-star saucy. <laughs> <laughs> Can be used for narats, roots... Uh, soups? Oh, yes, yes. Rats Ragouts, potatoes, potatoes, cops, steez, chops stews, and stews, stews. pear cutlets, grave, grays, gravy, 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 and all salad dressings. It's palatable. <laughs> In 1903, a Colonel Young husband was one of the pioneering visitors to the forbidden city of Lhasa in Tibet only to find that a bottle of Worcestershire sauce had got there first. And the bottle was found in volcanic rock by archaeologists in the city of Te Waima in New Zealand, which had been buried under a volcanic eruption in 1886. Well, now you've spilt some on the floor. Why can't you lot do unmessy subjects? The professor made it. Don't mess up this statue now. It's bad enough me having to dust that disgusting thing without having to clean crumbs from between his toes. I'm sorry, I just wanted to show everybody this handy mustard squeezer. Oh! <laughs> that sounds like a handy clue to our next subject. Miss Ogley, Miss Cartridge, mustard. Must I? Mustard. You know, Mrs Clements of Durham. Oh. Mr Dunn, are you in position? Not very keen, is she? No, but you are, Professor. What? Keen. You are Mr. Keen. Oh. And this is his file. Ah. The mustard plant was known to Greeks and Romans, and mustard seed was used as a medicine by... Hippocrates in 460 BC. I used a mixture of olive oil and mustard oil to cure stiffness. And powdered mustard in spirit is valued as a rapid and powerful brain stimulant. The Romans introduced mustard to England, and later, in Tudor times, mustard makers ground the seed with hand-operated queens. No, no, the... no not, not queens, Miss Ogley. Querns. Querns. Oh, oh sorry, Mr Halfpenny. Mm. Uh, hand-operated querns. Mm. What's a quern? It's a stone hand mill, oh, like Mrs Clements is using in Durham in 1720. Here I am, grinding up my Durham mustard seed in a quern. I'm inventing a method for imparting the full pungent flavour by sifting it, same as wheat flour. I know. I'll take my preparation to London to gain favour of King George the First. Your Majesty, please to try my Durham mustard. Mmm. The uh, mustard of Durham is excellent, Mrs. Clements. Wonderbar. Its uh, flavour gains my favour. I will patronise you and your Durham mustard. Thanks, Hen. Oh, pardon, Your Majesty. But uh, tell me, uh, how is it made, yeah? Away with ye. I will not impart my method of making mustard to anyone. And my secret process will die with me. Tra. So be it. I will get some of my German friends to make some. Oh, no, you won't, mate. German mustard's much too weak. Excuse me, Your Majesty. I am keen, Mr. Keen, and keen to manufacture mustard here in London in 1742. I have set up to manufacture mustard here in Garlic Hill in London to grace the tables of nobles and poor alike. 
Note the name, Keen. <laughs> Keen as mustard, eh? <laughs> I first thought of that phrase, Keen as mustard. My family, and my son, and all our sons, continued to manufacture mustard in London until 1903 when J&J &J Coleman took us over. Jeremiah Coleman had started making mustard in 1814 in Norwich, and Coleman's have continued making it ever since, and now have the only mustard museum in the world in Norwich. But as well as using mustard as an accompaniment to meat, there have been many other uses recorded. As an effective cleanser and purifier of drain pipes. Keep cats out of your garden. String up gaps in your hedge or fence with tonics soaked in a mustard solution. Cats hate it. And if you get mice now the cats have gone, wipe mustard round their holes. They hate it too. Cut brown paper into socks to fit your shoes and spread thick mustard between each sock. Put each sandwich in the shoe, that prevents cold feet. Dry mustard dusted over plants has proved successful in ridding them of insect pests, and a solution put on the roots protects them from the ravages of worms. A paste of mustard and vinegar spread over an ink stain will remove the stain of ink without a trace. Use mustard in a stiff paste to polish the silver. Your silver will positively sparkle. But the best of all is a pleasant mustard bath. Soothing and refreshing, especially after outdoor exercise and when feeling tired or stiff. I told you so in 460 BC, but I prefer mustard on my corned beef sandwich. Look, you dropped some mustard on his foot. Sorry. Oh, Miss Ugly, haven't you finished your tea yet? You know I don't like it too hot, Mrs Ford. Is there any sugar in it? Oh, not good for you, dear. Oh, make sure fair. Have some saccharin sweetness. Oh, thank you, dear. There you are. Mm. Mm. Oh, now it's too sweet. Saccharin is 425 times sweeter than sugar. That's right. Well done, Miss Cartridge. Saccharin, to your places, girls. But the saccharin story involves two men. Constantine Falberg and Ira Ripson. And what about the other chemistry students? But well, they were men as well. Never mind. Jump to it. Say, Constantine, how's it going? I have applied Bechert's procedure in obtaining pure orthotoluene sulfonamide. Bechert's procedure? Great. Great. And now, I shall oxidize it with potassium permanganate. To get my own sulfonamide do benzoic acid. <laughs> Great. Correct. Oh, watch out. Here comes Professor of Chemistry, Ira Renson. <laughs> All. Morning, sir. Miles. Hi, sir. Ah. Herr Folberg. Folberg. And how's my experiments on my oxidization program on ortho acids coming along? Your experiments? As professor of chemistry here at John Hopkins University, all experiments carried out by you, my students, are my idea. Is that not so? Yeah, Prof. Who's your thing, Mr. Remsen? I am not one of your students here, Remsen. I am merely helping with your experimentation program. Constantine Falberg is the leading authority on the analysis of sugar, sir. I know that, Hall, I know. But what about me? You're a genius, sir. Oh, great, sir. You're right, Isles, you're right. And it was my experiments that first oxidized otulic acid to pathalic acid. Is that not so? COH4, COOH2, great. I thought William Weith discovered that two years ago in my laboratory. Damn! Another failure, Falberg. Do be careful. You're always having accidents and spilling things. I got this to a, a crystalline substance last May. Then I discovered one less molecule of water. See, here. See, mm. There. See? Oh, terrific. Great. See the mess you make in my laboratory? And I don't think you're any nearer isolating toluene sulfolamide. Clear it up! Isolating toluene sulfonamide. What a pompous man! Come, clear up, we go home. If only we too could isolate old sulfamine benzoic. Mm. Two years staring into those boiling tubes. I'm beginning to get bored. Here you are, Mr. Fulberg. Fulberg. Oh, Fulberg, sorry. My best agalamemno soup made with egg and lemon uh. and some bread. Thank you, Mrs. Agalamemno. Good. Oh, 
Mrs. Agalopagus. Mr. Fowlby, what's the matter? Have you put sugar in the soup? Sugar? My best agala mem, no soup, no sugar. But it is so sweet. Oh? Oh, aha, the bread, eh? My fingers. Why, they are so sweet. My fingers. Here, Mrs. Agalopagus, taste my fingers. Oh, no, sir, no, no. No, but I am meticulous. I wash and scrub. I have the laboratory. Please, taste is incredible. Oh. This oh. is it. I must get to the laboratory. This is oh. 425 times sweeter than sugar, wouldn't you say? Oh, please let me have another lick. That is it. My God. Eureka. It is so sweet. Sugar substitute, oh. Mrs. Agalopagus. It is the oxidization of orthobenzol sulfamide. Sir, please, can I have some for my plum pie? Oh, it is so sweet. What do you call it, Mr. Frilly Big? Well, it is the crystallization of anhydro orthosulfamine benzoic acid. This is a mouthful to say for something so sweet. Yeah. What, uh, what is the Greek for sugar? Sacron. Uh, mm. No, not what you are doing. Stop sucking on my fingers. No, sucker on, sir. Sacron. Saccharin. Saccharon. I will patent the formula, manufacture saccharin, and make a fortune with my friend, Mr. List. This saccharin we will make in my factory in Westerhusen, Konstantin. It belongs to me, Falberg. Balladash. It was my accident and my discovery. The laboratory is mine, the beaker is mine, the sulfamide and the permanganate are mine. But the saccharin crystals are mine. And the commercial production will be mine. I'll sue you both. He did, much later. But he lost the case. Constantine Falberg is truly accredited as the discoverer of saccharin. Saccharin was proved to be of no food value and could be metabolized in the body. It was, therefore, an ideal sweetener for people on sugarless diets. A great invention by our Prussian friend, Falberg saccharin. Doesn't matter to me. Here in America, the history books will show that I invented it. And so will Trivial Pursuit. You wouldn't think something so small would have such a complicated name. No. Anybody want any more tea? I've got the kettle on the boil still. Hello, PC Bonner. Our local policeman. Would you like a cup oh, of tea? There's PC Bonner, Mr Halfpenny. Didn't you want him to help with the story of the pressure cooker? Oh, dear, there's no time now. We'll have to do the pressure cooker later. Oh, PC Bonner will be so disappointed. You know, Miss Ogley, Miss Cartridge, I think it'd be a jolly good idea to do the invention of the tram one day. But trams are very boring. Not very everyday objects, trams. I've got some good research on trams. Well, come along, everybody. It's time to log up. I've got a Masonic due tonight. Anyone coming to see Dr. Lunn? I'm just taking him his tea. Dr. Lunn? Wilfred Makepeace Lunn. What's he doing here? Dr. Lunn, he's an inventor. I know who he is. Where is he? He's rented a cellar in the basement to experiment with his alternative inventions. What? Mr. Halfpenny, what is all this? Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Director, uh, Dr. Lunn. I thought it might be nice if he did a little research in the basement. A little research? That madman, he'll blow the place up. You'll have to get him out. Oh, Dr. Dunn, he's sweet. Are you coming down to see him, Mr. Halfpenny? Uh, no, I've got to lock up. <laughs> Professor, now what do you know about this Dr. Lund fellow? Well, he is a little eccentric. You'll have to get him out. No, 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 I've got some notes to write up. You go. Me? You must be joking. <laughs> and be blown up. Ah, uh, Miss uh, Ogley, Miss Cartridge. Uh, Hello, yes. Miss Cartridge. We'll go and see him. <laughs> Here's your tea, Dr. Lund. Do you know the director doesn't know that you're down here? No. Hello, Dr. Lund. Are you all oh, right? I'm fine, thanks. Oh, God. What have you got to show us to do with food, Dr. Lund? Well, the first thing I've got is the surprise tin opener. Put it onto the tin like that. Right? Yes. See? Yes. It's good, isn't it? Mm. Well, what's the surprise? Oh! oh, my God. That's disgusting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, and another disgusting thing are people that eat peas off the knife. Yeah, I agree. Now, I've got this special knife. It's got holes in. That's right, for the peas. See? So oh, you can eat all good. the peas so on that's, good, that's fantastic. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's very nice. And here we've got... What's that? It's 
some very special food. Oof, smell. For oh. fat dogs. <laughs> so the fully natural fat feeds them and also exercises them. That's just for slow elderly dogs, is it? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh look at that. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> now, another problem you've got with food is it's very useful to have square eggs, isn't it? Because when you cut them, mm. they fit nicely onto the sandwiches, right up to the corners. Oh, of First of all, a you need a boiled egg, mm. yes. which you'll place mm. in this device, yes. like so. Yeah. Now, you'll notice that it's square at the bottom, mm. so we've got to force the egg through so it comes out square. Yes, oh, and we do I that oh, gun. Uh, I'm not it's like a special in. forcer, yeah. yes. which we... I think it's going to go... Right. Go up! Oh, dear! Uh, Oh, dear. oh, glad I came over here. Oh, God. There you are. Oh. Why is that? It's got enough. One square egg. Oh, that's really that's good, then. Sounds... And the nice thing about that's it is brilliant. that when you cut yeah. it in half, yeah. brilliant. it's got well, square yolks. It has. Right. There's one for you. Oh, thank you. And one for you. Cute. You move the bowl. Oh. <laughs> now, another useful idea is a deboning device that vibrates the flesh off the fish so we just left oh, it but it's got feathers yeah, that's because it's a flying fish oh right now if i start the sonic vibrator no, no. i think will... in that case i'm off uh, no it's it's not it's not dangerous no okay just slightly just the vibration it's all right but you see it vibrates imperceptibly <laughs> ah oh. Blown himself up yet, does he? No, he's very interesting and safe. But as you can see, the feathers are just vibrating very slowly. I've never known an inventor blow himself up so often. Well, Kahlberg's experiments could have gone wrong. Mm. And even Worcestershire sauce for minting and maturing can have some nasty results. There are mustard bombs and mustard gas. Don't be silly, Miss Cartridge. It's all right, everybody. Dr. Lunn is perfectly safe. Oh, so delightful. Oh. 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 Oh.